Hello, it's me again, and I wanted to make a video on solutions. Solutions and strategies on how to stay focused while writing. I made the first video, and I felt bad because I realized I didn't offer any strategies. I presented a problem with another problem. <laughs> uh, Chris, he said, I'm trouble um, staying focused while writing. Well, that's really interesting. And here's the reason why. But that's not the question that he asked is what, how do you stay focused? And I only really, yeah, why wasn't really a thing, but I felt why was just important when we know the why it's easier to strategize on how to conquer the shadow man or at least use the shadow man to our benefit because when I, when I say the shadow man I, I I mean the the primordial fear of that deep-seated fear of, of of finishing a work of standing out out of the herd whenever you finish something you know we uh, we always it's such a negative society it's like oh well joe rogan did this oh that pop star did that Oh, let her so dumb there, and there's constant negativity on every um, uh, every successful person, and you know if you once as soon as you present your out yourself out there, you're going to be dragged down or worse, ignored, completely ignored, and and that hurts just as much, if not more than being you know being pelted by. Uh, the mob. It's uh, so strategies. <laughs> uh, it's bottom line is being intentional uh, and having the right headspace. And there's a couple of different things and not all these are my original viewpoint. The first part was my spiel. You've probably heard stuff like this before. Uh, stuff that will help prepare you to write. To get you in the right mindset. Because the mindset is the most important. People write books in concentration camps. They write books in war times. They write books in, in the most unideal setting. The most important part is it's here. And the pen and paper. That's, that's the most important thing. I realize you HD... ADHD. You know what? I struggled with reading. Um, but knowing the reason why I struggled with reading and writing and learning in general didn't help me at all. No, didn't. Uh, finding ways to overcome this obstacle was more helpful I you know I, I don't carry around my my stuff like it's it's a badge of pride I just find something that works for me I, uh, you know when and in kindergarten and in first grade the teachers did not teach me they put me, because of my last name, they put me in a 
migrant workers class uh, and they don't, didn't teach those that group of people because they were migrant workers and they were going to leave and they probably didn't know English to begin with but I, I was how bad it was it was like uh, it was like they th didn't even think I knew English probably like you know but, uh, it was like so that, and that was because of my last name that's okay it's okay um you know I'm over it but I and I excelled surpassed all expectation not only can I read and write I write and read books and um that's, that's, that's pretty amazing um that's uh, and uh, I have to thank my parents for that for getting me out of that situation and uh, and uh, you know but still I had a whole lot of other issues that you know, learning difficulties and and it is extremely beneficial if we just focus on looking up, if you will, looking at the target. Because if you look down at all your problems, you'll go where your head goes. You go where your head goes, where your mind goes. If you look down, you get, you get wobbly, you walk in the tightrope, you get down. If you fix your gaze on the horizon, you're, you're going to be a whole lot more steady. Um, whenever I thought, think about tests, I don't think about the test. I don't think about passing the test. I think about being the best. And usually I'm not, but I study like it's a game and I study to be the best. I want to get the highest score. Usually I don't, but it's the game. It's the mind game. And, it's, and that shadow man, that, that uh, creature of fear that lives in our brains, that is, you know, there's If we get learn how to use him, that shadow man, in the proper way, we can use the fear as an accelerant, as something that propels us on as inspiration, if you will. So that's that's the one. So I'm I'm trying to lead up to a to make a couple of strategies, and that but I want you to understand the premise to understand these strategies, or they they won't work. So with the challenge, the six month challenge, you've been diagnosed with some incurable disease, and and you have one book to to write. You only have one book to write. You only have time to write one book. What is it going to be? The, the sometimes a deadline helps us helps propel us via fear. We use we can use fear as a as an accelerant as a something to propel us versus hold us back if there is no definite because uh, you know date then we can we can uh, you know we we can postpone judgment day and add uh, to you know we you know to the real judgment day at the very end of the days 
Um, that said, here are some techniques. I don't know what you've got to work with, but sometimes going to the gym helps people work out. Why? Because there's nothing else to do at the gym. You just go to the gym. You can work out at the house, but most people don't. Why? Because their mindset isn't prepared. There's so much other things to do at the house. There's snacks in the fridge. There's stuff to do. There's the couch to recline on. There's the TV. If you go to the gym, it's nothing but workout to do. And if you go to the library with the intention to sit down for a certain amount of time and type, I think that's a an equivalent to the gym. You there's less things to do. It's not always comfortable, but your mindset is different. Um, uh, Scott Adams has, he has some good books. Is as as how to win bigly. Was one how to win bigly after. Uh, failing at everything. Uh, and his technique for going to the gym is be he's just going to wear gym clothes and drive to the gym. He may not work out. He may just go right back. But the technique is but he, he puts his gym clothes on and that's what gets motivates him. It's like, it's like, it might not work out, but if he puts his gym clothes on, he'll feel more apt to work out, if that makes any sense. And if it may sound kind of weird, because you might not have access to a library or want to spend the gas for the library. A more economic situation could be dressing up a certain way and finding a space or some space to write. Wear your special hat. This is a writing only hat. This is a writing only shirt. This is a writing only place. And set a certain amount of time. Um, and Hollywood glamorizes writing a lot. It's not at all like, uh, like, like, it's so romanticized. It's not at all like it's, it's just, it's just not there. It's, it's so silly the way they make the the, the the way they make writers. It's you need some intention about what you're doing. Um, and and I understand we're dealing with other things. I understand HD HD is a factor but um, you know food can help you concentrate or not concentrate study your diet and everyone's everyone's got a different diet you know I say peanuts great great source of protein. Well, somebody else, they'll fall over dead. If they even smell peanuts, if they walk down the peanut aisle, they'll flop over, turn red, and, and, and die. Like, that's, you can't even go down the peanut aisle. It's that bad. So everyone is a little bit different. And, you know, sometimes when people are 
malnourished. I'm not saying lacking nutrition, lacking vitamins, lacking vitamin C, lacking vitamin D. That's going to affect the brain. It's going to affect the brain. Uh, I'm not a doctor. I'm not suggesting any particular diet. But it should be... Um, it should be healthy, right? I, I think it should be healthy. Um, and healthy is so... Like, some people can't eat meat. Some people can't eat gluten. Some people need pasta. Um, and there... And some people... <laughs> You know, pasta makes me sleepy. I don't. I love pasta, but I don't. When I'm typing, I don't. I don't eat it. I don't eat it. Um. I have always make sure I have my energy level, monitoring my energy levels. If I, there's something that makes me sluggish or giddy or unable to concentrate, I stay away from it. Uh, whatever that is for you. It could be completely different. Um, surprisingly, caffeine calms me down. It mellows me out and I can concentrate with caffeine. Uh, I can... I can fall asleep with the caffeine. It's awful. Um, um, uh, but... Uh, uh, my NyQuil makes me stay up. Go figure. Caffeine makes me sleepy. NyQuil doesn't let me sleep. So we're all different. All chemically slightly different. So you're going to have to some, find something that works for you. And even with ADHD. Right? You know when it's worse. <laughs> okay? It's, there's there's things that are going to make it worse. Uh and sometimes we don't get, um, you know, we're busy and nutrition, nutrition, healthy food, uh, you know, hot pockets are not healthy. Microwave food is not healthy. Um, but wholesome, healthy food sometimes can be a challenge to get. And this is my secret weapon. Say hello to my little friend. This is a pressure cooker, and I'm not turning it around, so I don't, I'm not trying to sell you a pressure cooker. This is what I use to eat, to prepare my food. It is a electric pressure cooker. And will, you may have heard of pressure cookers that explode. This one turns off automatically, and it locks. And I can cook so much. And if I'm typing and I forget, it turns off and it keeps it warm. And when I'm hungry, I was like, oh, well, I haven't eaten in so many hours. I get my pressure cooker. You can have fresh food, fresh rice, pasta, beans, chicken, fish, vegetables, anything with this thing. And it's not microwave food. This has all, all the nutrients. You can make soups, uh, chili, everything. And it's pretty fast. Um, I've had frozen chicken ready in 20 minutes, 15 minutes. Um, and I'm not, this is, I'm not even showing, actually, I don't even like this brand. Uh, but if I've been waiting for it to die. And it's still going. I've had other brands that have, I've enjoyed more, but I dropped them and it broke on me. And it's, it's a sad, sad story. But diet. Um, uh, if um, the tea. Uh, but 
figure out something for you. Be intentional. Set up your space. And the biggest thing is you're setting up your mind space. Because people write during wars. They write uh, while they're in concentration camps. And, and it's all of the frame of mind. And, uh, and there's the aspect of the shadow man. And you figure out how to make the shadow man be a accelerant, not a deterrent or an avoidant, a um, was it uh, Mike Tyson who said, uh, "Fear is a good thing. Fear keeps you alive." And and figure out how to make that fear into a fight instead of a fright. That you fight, you're going at your goals. You just freeze, you're, you're just spinning your wheels. And it's frustrating. It's frustrating, but you don't have to deal what's on the other side of the finish line. And subconsciously, we we know that, oh, those guys that, uh, that win, you know, or those, those, the famous people, they're, they get berated. Uh, look at, um, any, any famous YouTuber, like, oh, they got so many critics. And I, I like to tease Chad Fuchs. He's my favorite guy. Uh, but, um, you know, if you read some of his comments on his books, it's so discouraging. Like, it's like, I, was, I liked his books. But there's a lot of negativity. I was like, well, why do people do that? And you read J.R. Tolkien's comments. That's, that made me uh, kind of chuckle. You read J.R. Tolkien's comments. And... Uh, it's it's amazing. J.R. Tolkien, the, the great granddaddy of all of fiction, is getting is just crushed in the comment section. So much negativity, and it's like you want to. So when we try to, like, oh, well, it ought to be that guy. Uh, we we're gonna try to make everything perfect, so we're not the the big red thumb sticking out of, you know, sticking out like a big red thumb. That's yeah, and. Or it could be completely worse, because then if you do fail or do complete a project and you don't become famous, then failure is like, oh, I don't even exist. And it's funny, um, you know, I'm talking about writing sane books and I should be, I should be writing, but I'm also self, I'm promoting as well. I'm promoting, I'm making relationships um promoting my work uh, promoting my work <laughs> uh, if you can, uh, uh, and um and that's just as important i've found to promote to market your work is just as important as writing because if a tree falls in the woods and no one was there to see it, did it really fall? Or is it just a log on the ground? You know, that's a tough question. Uh, but, yeah, so promotion? This is, that'll be another topic. Marketing, another topic. I'll let you know when I figured that one out. That's a tough one. Um... um no good solution there. But staying focused while writing, 
that's the easy part. Trust me, that's the easy part. Getting published? Don't even worry about it. Don't worry about getting published. Worry about finishing, having something to present. You can publish a book. Uh, if you want to know, I'll share on how I've published my books. And it doesn't cost me anything. I don't. Doesn't cost me anything. Except time and time. And, uh, yeah. Um, Amazon. I go through Amazon. Uh, it's a different world, and it, it's if you want, uh, it's the way of publishing has changed so much, so much. Um, don't worry about going to the publishers, because the answer is already going to be no, probably no, unless you know somebody. That might help. That might help. But probably the answer is no. And you're going to do as much, as much, as much work marketing your book to the publishers as you would going straight to the audience, which I, like, I am doing now. I have my book. You are the audience. Yeah, Founders Keep, it's about a group of mages on their journey to become dragon riders. It's a fantasy fiction, dragons, magic, adventure, true love, revenge, all the fun stuff. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's my sales pitch. Uh, Publishers, they might not like it. You might like it. It's a free book. Check it out.